There's a man without a face in the corner of the coffee shop. Of course, he's always there. Yet another one of my many hallucinations, I've been told. The joys of schizophrenia. It started when I was 23. Small things. The feeling of a mosquito on my neck. The faint buzzing of the insects not there. Swat it down, a voice would whisper. I would, without thinking, leave a red mark on my neck, but find no remains on my palm. It only escalated. The voices grew numerous, each with a different personality. A soft voice, motherly. A calming voice, brotherly. A stern voice, like a strict professor. An angry voice, like a spurned lover. We would converse at night, me never questioning their presence, only accepting their existence, until my roommate heard me, and a brief stint in the hospital later, and I was discharged with a regimen of medications and therapies. The people in the shadows have never left my side throughout all of this. Sometimes the voices are happy, sometimes they're sad. Sometimes I go days to weeks without their chatter, the feeling of a hand on my shoulder, the soft buzzing of insects in the dead winter, the smell of a friend's perfume when I'm all alone. All ebb and flow with my stability in life, but the people stay the same. I first saw the faceless man when I was 26. I could tell he was smiling when I glimpsed him from the corner of my eye. I couldn't focus on him at first, never a head on view, but he still smiled with no mouth in my peripheral vision. His appearances were short initially, but as the months went by I noticed him more and more until I saw no traces of the other shadow people. Always in the coffee shop where I work, always in the corner with that featureless grin of his. Now he lingers, that faceless man. He'll sit there for hours. My psychiatrist has always been intrigued when I talk about the faceless man during our sessions, saying that the faceless man seemed different from other hallucinations patients reported. She's the expert, but I'm not so sure. He's just there, lingering, watching me at work. At least he's harmless. I wonder sometimes if I'll ever be able to interact with him, like how I talk to my voices. And then something came over for me, and for some reason I decided to take a cup of coffee over to the table where the faceless man was sitting. I couldn't look directly at him, but he seemed to smile wider when I did. An hour later, my coworker came up to me. Someone had left a note on the table where the faceless man had been sitting, a thick, bone white card with meticulous black lettering. Thank you for the coffee. It was lovely. My coworkers admired the lovely handwriting, wondering who wrote it. And I stared at it, wondering who else was real. 